This is the latest smartphone in the Galaxy M series, the Galaxy M32. Now, it is priced starting under 15,000 rupees, and in this segment, it already has a lot of competition to deal with. With this phone, Samsung has mainly focused on the display and the battery, which stands at a whopping 6,000 mAh. But is that enough to help it get a spot at the top of your wishlist? To find answers, I tested out the Galaxy M32. Hello everyone, I'm Aditya, you're watching Gadgets 360 and this is the full review of the Samsung Galaxy M32. Let's begin. Let's start with the design. The frame and the back are made of plastic and are curved on all sides, making this 196 gram phone comfortable to hold and use. It does pick up fingerprints due to the glossy finish. I had to keep wiping the smartphone to keep smudges off it. You get a side mounted fingerprint scanner on the right which is quick to unlock the phone. The result of such placement is that the volume buttons are pushed further up and you'll need to stretch your thumb to reach them. The left side houses the tray with dual nano SIM slots and a dedicated slot for storage expansion. You also get a 3.5mm headphone jack at the bottom along with the USB Type-C port and the bottom firing speaker. The display is a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED Full HD Plus resolution panel with a 90Hz refresh rate. It is crisp and has good viewing angles. Samsung claims a peak brightness of 800 nits in high brightness mode. I found the display to be bright enough outdoors with content viewing a delight. The 90Hz refresh rate helps the interface look smooth and fluid most of the time. The Galaxy M32 is powered by the MediaTek Helio G80 processor and you can either have it with 4GB of RAM or 6GB of RAM. In terms of storage, you do have the option for 64GB or 128GB of storage. Now this does get a dedicated microSD card slot which makes storage expandable. I did still notice some stutter while using the phone and it also took slightly longer than expected to load apps and multitask. The Galaxy M32 did receive a software update during the review period which reduced the stuttering, but load times didn't change. 4GB RAM isn't enough if you multitask a lot. I could play casual games on the Galaxy M32 without any issues. I did also try the demanding Call of Duty Mobile on the Galaxy M32 and it ran at the low preset for graphics while the frame rate was set to medium. The game was playable at these settings without any issues. It did not get warm after playing the game for 20 minutes and registered a 4% drop in battery life. Samsung ships the latest One UI 3.1 on top of Android 11 and the user experience is quite familiar if you have used a Samsung device before. It does come with a number of pre-installed apps, many of which can be uninstalled to reduce clutter. I did get push notifications from some of them, which was annoying. The Galaxy M32 also has a game launcher, which lets you game without any disturbances and can block incoming notifications and gestures as well. The game launcher also gives you the option to club installed games in the same folder. The Galaxy M32 is equipped with a 64 megapixel primary camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. The 64 megapixel camera uses pixel bending to deliver 16 megapixel shots by default. For selfies, it has a 20 megapixel sensor in the dewdrop notch. The camera app has scene recognition that's enabled by default and it is quick to detect scenes. Daylight photos turned out well but did not have the best dynamic range. The AI scene detection was quick and bumped colors slightly in the output, but this can be disabled. Details were strictly average and text at a distance wasn't legible. The ultra wide angle camera offered a wider field of view, however, Details aren't the best, which was evident on zooming in. The Galaxy M32 does close-ups very well. Subjects were sharp and the colors were fairly accurate. Portrait shots had good edge detection and you can select the level of blur before taking the shot. 
macro shots were decent, but I had to try different angles to avoid blocking light. The output is limited to 2 megapixels in resolution. In low light, the phone used a slightly longer exposure to take each shot. It managed to keep noise under control, but fine grain was visible in the output. The night mode takes about 5 seconds to capture the shot and also crops into the frame slightly to minimize shakes. The resulting images have slightly better details in the shadows, but there isn't a huge improvement. Selfies were decent and the phone managed good edge detection for portraits. Even after dark, with a light source nearby, the Galaxy M32 managed good selfies. Samsung has beautification on by default, which smoothens the output, but you can disable it. Video recording tops out at 1080p for both the primary as well as the selfie camera. Footage shot in daylight did have shakes, and the phone failed to stabilize shots completely. Low light footage also had visible shakes if recorded while walking around. Video recording isn't one of the strongest suits of the Galaxy M32. The massive 6000mAh battery on the Galaxy M32 delivers very good battery life. It went on for over a day and a half without any issues, even at 90Hz refresh rate all the time. In our HD video loop test, the phone managed to score 20 hours and 56 minutes, which is very good. The Galaxy M32 supports 25W fast charging, though the company has only given a 15W charger in the box. Using the bundled charger, the big battery only got 22% in 30 minutes and 44% in an hour. Charging the phone completely took over 2 hours. Samsung claims that the Galaxy M32 is for binge watchers and its crisp AMOLED display and the big 6000mAh battery do help with that. If you aren't a heavy user, the Galaxy M32 is not going to give you a lot of reasons to complain about other than its poor low light camera performance. Multitaskers and heavy users should stay away from the Galaxy M32 as it doesn't deliver the same level of performance as the competition. It isn't the most powerful device under 15,000 rupees and the relatively slow charging for its huge battery might be a concern. A lot of people would be better off with the Redmi Note 10s or the Realme 7 instead. Now many manufacturers are also pushing 5G in the same price point as a feature and if you are looking for something that's future ready, this one won't fit the bill. So that was my review of the Galaxy M32. Now what do you think about the smartphone? Do let me know that in the comment section down below. And as always for all things tech, stay tuned to Gadgets360.com.